can't tell them, no, oh, this is on superiority or inferiority. So here comes, um, if intra-class correlation, for example, similarly, we are taking 30 students, their average mark, 10 students getting good mark and 10 average and 10 poor, it is equally distributed. On the other hand, this is ICC higher, that is for favoring. Uh, this is 20 percent, people are getting higher null, uh, good marks, whereas remaining five on the two sides are getting average and uh, five is poor. Here, what they will tell that coaching class, they are very much good performance because 20 is brighter. Whereas on the other hand, 20 person are taking very poor mark and the five is brighter and five is average. So for this type of um, intra-class correlation uh, effect is plays an important role. Here in this design effect, you have to do uh, use this formula. 1 plus intra-correlation class coefficient plus uh, into k minus 1. That, that is k minus 1 is already we have calculated the sample size. No, that is the thing. Now, uh, most commonly used software is Buprin uh, often in one group and 40 mics in another group and their expected outcome. What is my expected outcome is the duration of analgesia. For A group it is coming as 300 minutes and B group as 400 minutes and my fix uh, we are analyzing is nominal and the expected standard deviation is 70 minutes. Now we will see how we are, how we can load the software, glimpse of it. First of all, we have to download the Google in that uh, Glim software. Then you have to log in using your ID. Uh, yes, log in. Then we have to type the new study. Then title. As I mentioned, it is buprenorphine, often two different doses of buprenorphine. Then next is the power. Then next is the error. Type 1 error, that is the alpha error. Already 0 0.05 has been, uh, it has been incorporated and we are checking for the next power as 0 0.01. And next. Next is the, uh, we have to, whatever predictor we have to use that we have to type. Ah, then is the outcome. Then repeated measures is there or not, any clustering is there or not, or any fixed predict, uh, predictor is there or not. Then here we have give the dose of buprenorphine as the predictor. Then uh, type of data, whether it is nominal or continuous, here nominal. Then we are using for two groups. Then we have taken smallest size.
in the group ratio. And the outcome standard deviation we are fixing it as 70 minutes. And we should include the confidence interval. And here comes the calculation. We have uh, um, in, uh, entered all the parameters. What is our reward? Uh, what the thing has been wanted? So now we are going to calculate. So we got the total sample size as um, 20 with the power 85 percentage and uh, 60 percentage. So in that 2020 20 sample size and the type 1 error is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So similarly, you have to calculate for whatever thing you. The thing is, you have to know what are which one is important. Then, as I mentioned, you have to do some minor adjustment for the dropouts also. Uh, whatever method you are following, uh, whether it is manual or software, we have to compensate this expected dropout rates also. You have to divide the calculated sample size by the expected follow-up loss. For example, 300, if you are getting uh, only 250, uh, remaining 20% you have to divide. Then you will be getting the dropout list also. So you are including the dropout in your total sample size. So your sample size is little bit more than the expected. Then overall summary, as I told, uh, study design is more important for sample size calculation. And our take home message is adequate sample size is more important. If you are taking too large or too small, also your uh, ethical report, whatever data you are uh, getting, you know, it is become invalid. It will be futile. So, appropriate sample size calculation is more important. Thank you.